Hello, people of God. It is Lakedra again, and I want to join my faith and come together in prayer. Praying for those of you that are standing and believing God for breakthrough in the life of your loved one, your spouse. Whatever the case may be, that they will begin to receive the infilling and power of the Holy Spirit. It is through being filled with the Holy Spirit that people can do what is right. And so people of God, thank you all so much for coming on and joining with me. It is with God all things are possible. And we will have not if we ask not. And so by you asking on the behalf of your loved ones and for the things that your family are needing right now. God will answer and supply that need because of you. Jesus tells us in his word that we just need to seek God and his righteousness. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things will be added. God already knows what we are in need of. Before we even ask. But we will have not if we ask not. And so when we ask. Anything according to his will. God will hear us. And it is his will. That we all come to the knowledge of truth. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because there is nothing good in any of us. The Bible tells us that at our best, we are as filthy rags. It took Jesus. We are as filthy rags. It took Jesus to come in the form of flesh. It took God sending his word who became flesh and take upon him the punishment for our wrongdoing. He had to die. And suffer. He had to be beaten. He was wounded. Isaiah says. For our transgressions and bruise. For all of our iniquities. All of our sins. And evil and wickedness. And it was. The chastisement. Of our peace. Was upon him. He was chastised. So that we can have peace with God. And be reconciled back to him. And it, it was by his stripes. We are now healed. We can be healed in our spirit, soul and body. And become joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Meaning we can become as Christ. And the hope of glory. Live on the inside of us. He is our only hope. Our only rescue. And so in order to see deliverance in your life. And to see dignity and honor. And godliness in your marriage. And in your household. It's going to take you. Praying on the behalf of that loved one. Who is bound. By the enemy. It's going to take you. Keeping your hands lifted up before God. Each and every day. My God, the Bible tells us in 2nd Chronicles, in the 26th chapter, it talks about Uzziah the king. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper and overcome his enemies. And it is the same thing that God would do for each and every one of us. As we seek the Lord and all that we do and acknowledge him. He will lead. He will move us forward. He will direct our path. You will find that you are able to overcome that circumstance and that situation. And as you begin to ask for God's holiness, righteousness and the kingdom of God. To dwell on the inside of your life, your family's life, your children's lives, your lives, your families, your marriages can be healed. It is through the power of the Holy Ghost. We can do what's right. We will have the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and sin and wickedness and have power over all the power of the devil and have power over all the power of deception. And nothing shall by any means harm us. It is through us having the mind of Christ. Our lives. 
will be pleasing unto God. And the word of God shows us that this is what the Father promised. He promised to give us a new heart and a right spirit. He promised to take out of us the stony, stubborn heart and give us a tender heart. Put his spirit in us and cause us to walk in his ways. He has to cause us to walk in his ways and obey his commands. He has to give us the power to want to do things that are pleasing in his sight. He has to give us the desires of our hearts. This is why he said and vowed that he would take out of us our stony, stubborn hearts and give us a new heart. Meaning a heart after his. David would always pray. That God would give him a heart after his. This is why the Bible says. He was a man after God's own heart. And that is what it comes to. Us having the heart of God. This is when a man can begin to love his wife. As Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Loves us. And the wife can have the heart. And the desire to want. To be in harmony with her husband. And love her husband. And receive her husband. And be faithful to her husband. And submit unto him as the church is submitted unto the Lord. These are things of the spirit. These are the ways of God. We have been blessed to inherit. Through the asking. Through praying, praying, hallelujah, and interceding, even on the behalf of your loved ones who are sinning and don't know, don't know the power that is working against them. Don't know that the enemy has them doing what he wants and they can't get free. It's going to take God, as the Bible said, perhaps giving them the heart to repent. Convicting the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. It takes the Holy Spirit's conviction. The convicting power of the Holy Ghost to bring us to repentance. Bring us to ourselves. It is what would cause a man to leave and cleave unto his wife. It is what would cause the backsliders to surrender. Submit to God and resist the devil and he flee. The power of prayer, oh my God, is what causes us to receive the power of God. Praying is powerful because it causes us to receive the things from God. Prayer is so powerful because it causes us to commune with God. And be in His presence and enter into His courts and into His gates in the heavenly realms. While we are here on this earth, it causes us to be translated in heavenly places. Our spirits are able to commune with God. And God is able to sup with us. Jesus says that him and the Father will come and sup with us. They will come to us and be with us. And so we have to spend time with God in prayer. Jesus was a man of prayer. He was a man in the flesh, but yet he was God, clothed in flesh. My God, he knew no sin. He's the perfect lamb of God. He paid the way where we can come now boldly before the throne of grace and receive mercy in times of need and trouble. He is our high priest. He's forever, the Bible says, making intercession. For us to say he has also given us this same office, this same priesthood where we can pray here on this earth and commune with God, commune with heaven, be in agreement with heaven and turn our world around and our homes and families and lives around. And God's mercy can be upon our loved ones, our spouse, our children. They will prosper and they will come out because of us. God has given the order, the order and the priesthood in his same image and likeness where we can pray and intercede on the behalf of those that know not what they are doing. Jesus prayed these prayers for us. 
when he was upon the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. While they was hanging him on the cross, while they were beating him and spitting upon him. So whatever your spouse has done to you, just know they done it to our Lord Jesus Christ first. He suffered and paid the price. Who done no wrongs. He was the only one. He was the only one faultless and blameless. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And yet he has forgiven us for all of our sins. And has given us the privilege to now pray on the behalf of our loved ones. And they will come out. After all we have done against the Lord. He has blessed us. And he treat us as though we done nothing wrong. And has given us the robe of righteousness. And placed the ring on our fingers. And upon our finger. And now we seat in heavenly places with him on the right hand side of the Father. And we can come to the throne of grace boldly. Because of the blood of Jesus. And intercede. Make intercession. For those that have done us wrong. For those that have done us wrong and God will hear us and answer us. God will bless our lives and relationships. God will bring peace between us. Think about Job. Job had the same experience. It was through his prayers. God had mercy on his friends who was persecuting him. Who blamed him. Who accused him. Who wasn't a good support system when he needed them. They turned their backs up on them. They made his life worse. He was already suffering. And they were abusing him emotionally. Not one of them supported him. Not even his own wife. She had even gave up on Job. Believing and trusting in God. And God told Job. Pray for your friends. Pray for them. Even though they didn't deserve Job's prayers. God had mercy upon them because of the prayers of Job the righteous. The prayers of the righteous availed much. It wasn't that Job never had sinned. He was a man, of course he sinned. But he was a man of prayer. And he always Applied the blood to cover the sins of not only his, himself but his children. He was an intercessor. And the Lord had Job's friends to bring their offerings for their sin. And he told them that Job will pray for you. And I'll have mercy upon you. And God is saying the same things right now people of God. Just as our Lord Jesus Christ. Was the reason God had mercy upon us. Your loved ones. Will also receive God's mercy because of you. Paul says it as well. To the spouse. The believing spouse. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 15 and 16. We read he says. Don't you know wife. Talking to the believing wife. And the believing husband. He said. Don't you know that your spouse. Will come out because of you. If you handle this right. They will not only come back to you. But they will come back to God. Your unconditional love. Love covers a multitude of sin. And love never fails. Jesus says. That it is by your love. They will know you are my disciple. That's right. We don't retaliate. We love them. We love our loved ones. We, we pray for those that persecute us. Jesus says bless them. That despitefully use you. Jesus went through it. He didn't retaliate the Bible said. He left his case. In the hands of God who is the judge. It was in his own body that he took upon him. Our punishment. So that we could be dead to sin and live 
unto righteousness. And by his stripes we were healed. And so whatever you are suffering with today, people of God, your labor is not in vain. The tears you have cried, you may have sown in tears, but you are going to reap the joy in the end. You're going to come back with the harvest in your hands of what all your sowing has caused you to reap. God is pleased, Paul the Apostle says, when we pray for all people. This is what will bring godliness and dignity and honor and reconciliation to happen between man and God. And they can live a life that please Him. Their eyes will be open as a result of us praying for God to open their eyes and their hearts will be softened. Their hearts will be softened as a result of us praying the will of God to soften their hearts. It is written by Jesus Christ, we were healed. He has paid the debt for us all. And so Paul tells us, let us come boldly to the throne, to the throne of grace. We can come boldly and ask of anything. According to the will of God. And that is that none would perish but have everlasting life. It will be given. It is God's will for a man to love his wife as his own body. That can only happen. By the spirit of God. The spirit of truth. The spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the wife can then begin to honor her husband and respect him. And be in harmony with him. And support him. And repent. Turn away from me. Even do, do great. They both can. By the spirit of the Lord coming in. Dwelling on the inside of them. This is what will cause peace. It is the spirit of peace. The spirit of joy and love. And patience. And long sufferings. And self control. And goodness. This is how we are able to do what is right. By this born again spirit on the inside of us. Jesus told Nicodemus. Except you be born again. You cannot receive the kingdom of God. You cannot understand the ways of God. You cannot be like Christ. You cannot be like God. That's what he told Nicodemus. In John chapter 3. Then he goes. Further down in that chapter. We read it. And we can hear him saying, you know, it is when I am lifted up, I will be able to draw all men unto me. As Moses, who were in the wilderness, lifted up the serpent on the pole, the, bur the bronze serpent on the pole. And all those that looked upon it was healed. He says, it's the same of me when I am lifted up. When I am lifted up on that cross is what he was talking about. I will be able to draw all men unto me. He says the father so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe upon him. Look upon him. Would not perish. But have everlasting life. It was the same way God was illustrating. These things to the people in the wilderness. He was showing them about the Lord. The Messiah was going to come. He had Moses to make that bronze serpent. So that all those that were bitten by the serpent. And about to die. When they look up on that bronze serpent they will be healed. He was showing Moses what was coming. The Messiah was going to be hung up on the tree. Hung up on the cross. And all those that look up on him would not perish. But have everlasting life. And those that are not looking people of God. Those that are in your lives that are not looking unto God. It is through your prayers God would give them eyes to look. And a heart to turn to him. And the veil can be taken away. And it is by the same spirit that dwells on the inside of us. And raised Christ from the dead. Would change them into that glorious image of our Lord Jesus Christ. Causing them to become more and more like him. 
The same way we are increasing and growing spiritually as we spend time with God. As we spend time and be in fellowship with Him. He will be able to finish what He had started in our life. Bring us unto more and more holiness and righteousness. Into His same image and likeness. It's the same way your loved one will be restored back to God. And on their journey of faith with Him. And their relationship with Him. And you'll find the harmony coming back in your marriage. You'll find your marriage becoming an illustration of the way Christ and the church are united into one. As the scriptures say, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. Paul says it is a great mystery. About the husband and the wife being together. But it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. He says, so again I say each man must love his wife. As he loves himself. And the wife must honor her husband. This is a godly spiritual led marriage and relationship. That has been born by the spirit. But it's going to come through praying people of God. Seeking God's holy face. Hallelujah. Having the desires of wanting to turn from our wicked ways. God will hear and answer. And he will heal our land. He will heal our lives, our relationships. This is something the devil hates. But as you keep praying for God to pour out his spirit as he promised. Upon your loved ones, your children. This is what's going to, this is what's going to save your marriage. This is what's going to save your household. My God, hallelujah. I'm telling you, God hears the prayers of the righteous. Only the righteous will cry out to God and pray for holiness and his gentle spirit. Because we know the power of the Holy Spirit. We know about it. We know that that is what helps us do what is right. We are the ones that depend upon him. As Jesus said. That when he come, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And it is the truth. It is the truth. None of us will have the power to walk in holiness. Or have the desires. Except it is by the Holy Spirit giving us the desires of our heart. It is his fruit. It is his fruit. That is causing these things to happen. We are seeing his attributes. His life. The life of Christ. In us. Oh hallelujah. Causing us to be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over all the powers of sickness. And disease. And sin and death. And evil and wickedness. Where the enemy. Will have the strength over us. If it wasn't for the power of God. Helping us. Lifting up a standard against him. Helping us to overcome the temptations. But we don't receive this grace. We don't receive this strength. If we don't pray and ask for it every day. We have to ask God to give us our daily bread and strength every day. And while we're at it. While we're at it. We have to also pray for our loved ones eyes to be open. And for God to also fill them so we all can be on one accord. The same spirit that's at work in us. God wants to be in them. What harmony does light and darkness have? What harmony does Christ and Satan have? There is none. We have to come out from among the darkness. We have to come out from among the darkness. There is no fellowship with darkness. And so your marriage will always be separated and will not prosper. If one is in darkness and one is in light. So the key is you want both of you all to receive the spirit of God. You want you and your spouse born again. You want your spouse to also have a relationship with the Lord. And even if they think. Because I have heard spouses reach out saying that their, their loved ones, their spouse. 
I have heard standers say their spouse who were believers and Christians supposedly are in other relationships have filed for divorce are saying that God doesn't want them to be married. All types of things the devil has come in and plant in their minds. There is so much going on. And so we have to even pray for God to open up their eyes. You have to pray. And God will do it. God will do it. He hears the prayers of the righteous. And so I want to join my faith with each and every one now. People of God, as we pray, God will hear and answer and pour out his spirit. That's his will. That is his will that we do what is right in his sight. And it is by his power that's at work in us. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. It is God that gives us the will to do what is pleasing in his sight. It is his power that works in us. And so, Father, we thank you for your power that you have given us to help us do what is pleasing in your sight. And we also ask, we also ask, Father, that you would give the same power on the inside of our loved ones, our spouses, our children, cause them to become believers in Christ Jesus, O oh God. Lord, so that there will be harmony and peace and dignity. So there will be, Lord God, righteousness and obedience, Lord God. And your image, oh God, will be at work, will be seen. Lord, in the name of Jesus, marriages can begin to illustrate the way Christ and the church are one. Yes, oh God, keep back the hands of the enemy. Keep it held back, God, by your spirit. Oh God. Let your spirit lift up a standard against the evil one. That, that is prowling around. Prowling around. Seeking whom he can devour. God praying on the weak. And the blind. And the deaf. Oh God but you are the ones to open up. You are the one that opens up the eyes of the blind. And deaf ears. And causes them to hear and see. You are the one oh God. In your presence. The prison doors are open. It is you that gives us the encounters that we need to come to the knowledge of truth. And so, God, we're asking that you will encounter wayward spouses in Jesus' name in our lives, oh God. In our marriages, oh God. Our families, oh God. That the divorce will be stopped, oh God. The separations will be no more, oh God. Only harmony and unity and peace and love. That so many that are standing today and asking for it, God. Pour out your spirit, your gentle, loving, your gentle, loving spirit. So that he can be at work in us and helping us do what is right. As you promised in your word, God. And so we are asking, we are joining, oh God, with you in heaven. Calling forth your word that it be done, God. We believe and trust in your word. Yes, oh God, let that word come alive. That word that is alive and living. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Cutting between spirit, soul, and body, God. Your word that knows the intents of our hearts and our minds. And knows what we all are in need of. Yes, oh God, remove the blinders. Remove the blindness and the stony stubborn heart and let there be tender hearts and eyes open. Anoint the eyes of the blinds of our loved ones in the name of Jesus. Anoint the eyes of the blind in our loved ones life, oh God, and peace between us in the name of Jesus. Cause them to be a part of the body of Christ. Be joint heirs with Christ Jesus no longer, Lord God. Join with the kingdom of darkness that is causing them to rebel against you, God. But instead, they will be joined as with Christ. Separated from evil and set apart for your holy use, O oh God. That they can walk uprightly in your sight for Jesus' sake who has paid the price with his blood. And so we humbly ask you, O oh God. We submit ourselves before you in the name of Jesus. Thanking you for forgiving us for all of our sins, God. Giving us a new heart and a right spirit as well. 
And also to forgive all those that has persecuted us and hurted us, oh God, and betrayed us. The same way, God, you have forgiven us. When we turn our backs on you, God, and turn against you, Lord, and we're serving other gods and serving the God, serving the God of this world, God. We repent of all of these things, Lord. But we didn't know what we was doing, God. We didn't see the evil. But Lord, while we were yet sinning, you still sent your son, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, who never sinned. You sent him to take our place, God. Oh, God, we just thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, forgive us for these things, Lord. And so, Lord, we thank you for giving us the privilege to now even pray for our loved ones because you have had mercy on us. And you have allowed us to pray for them. Because you don't want none to perish but have everlasting life. Thank you God for your goodness and your mercy. You have surely shown us your goodness. You have surely forgiven us. Thank you God. Look at the relationship we have with you. We can pray Lord and stand before you now blameless. Without a single fault. As long as we judge ourselves and confess our faults. You are faithful and just to forgive us for all sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for these benefits. Thank you, God, for your faithful love that endures forever. And we trust and believe, God, that as we continue praying, keeping our hands lifted up before you, that our loved ones will overcome the evil that has taken them captive. They will win this battle against the enemy. For the battle is not ours, O oh God, is yours. The same way Moses kept his hands held up with Aaron and Ur with him. This caused the children of Israel to overcome their enemy. They won the battle. And Lord, that represented them praying as Moses, them had their hands lifted up, connected with you. It showed us, O oh God. How if we stay connected with you, praying our loved ones as well that are in the battle, that are being attacked, they are going to come out of their bondage. Oh yes, oh God, the chains will be broken. The enemy will have to loose them. Their enemy, the enemy that is working against them, the destroyer of their soul will have to loose them and let them go. Their eyes will be open. Thank you, God. We're going to keep our hands lifted up as Moses and Aaron did. Lord, until the battle has been truly won and it is over. And our loved ones has come back to you. Their first love. You be their first love. In Jesus' name, And we thank you that marriages are being healed. And they are coming in alignment with your will. Families are being healed. Children are being restored. Fathers, oh God, are being joined to their children. And mothers, in the name of Jesus, are being joined to their children. Thank you, God. Marriages are being healed, delivered and free. Oh, we thank you, God. We expect it to be. And more and more testimonies from here on out this year, oh God. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We worship you. Praise him, people of God. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We praise your holy name. Thank you, God, for binding up the enemy. Thank you, Lord God, for casting him out. Thank you, God, for sending your angels on the scene, Lord. Oh, God, yes. Rebuke him that devour, Lord. Oh, God, fight him on our behalf. In the second heavens, oh, God. Oh, God, thank you for coming against everything that will try to hinder our prayers. From being heard. Thank you that you are hearing them God. They are being lifted up unto you. As offerings oh God. And smelling good smelling aroma. And incense. And the incense of heaven Lord. Oh we thank you God. They are being poured out. They are going before you as incense oh God. That are pleasing in your sight. You are hearing and answering our prayers. Thank you that many things are happening behind the scenes right now. Lord, thank you for moving on the behalf of our loved ones' lives, oh God, and touching their hearts and their minds. 
helping them to believe and come back home and be joy to their spouses, oh God, and their loved ones that have been standing for them. Thank you, God, for healing and restoring marriages, stopping the divorces. And even if there has been a divorce, oh God, thank you that you are still able to overturn them and bring healing. In Jesus' name, we praise him. Praise him, people of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We worship you and honor you. Remember, God loves you, people of God, and I love you too. Thank you all so much for coming on, joining with me. Remember, I am still praying for you, and I will continue praying for you each and every day as the Lord gives me the grace and the strength. And until next time, remember you are blessed. Bye-bye.